Hello YouTube, it is David, it is the Rise of Nations, it's episode 15 here of SFB and today we have the end of the normal season and where we will sit going into the promotion stage of the season. Yeah, and I can say that because we're mathematically secured. Uh, we beat AC Horsens in the game that I said I wasn't going to show you. Uh, we did win this game here 4-2. We were pretty dominant in it. Hardbro had a pretty good game out there, and the shoe was the shoe. And the dull scores a screamer really late doors as well. Um, and yeah, it was, look, the moment that we scored this goal before the 15th minute mark, we knew, okay, we're probably going to win this game. Whenever we score the first one, we do it well. It's now about if we can take six points from the next two games. We do play Vigil, who were top in our first actual game of the episode, not this game, obviously. Um, we'll be okay. This ball from Hard, bro. I'm going to drop Anderson as much as it hurts me at 16. He's so good. I'm going to drop him. I'm going to play Hard, bro, alongside Vilhermos, Vilhermosa. Um, and those two on paper are our best two center mids. We'll do it, right? Um, but as you can see, we're 2-0 up here. Uh, literally, my assistant was screaming at me to close down Crosby the whole time. I said, okay, at half time I will. First thing he does, basically sets up a goal. So um, maybe don't listen to the assistants when you're winning. I think that's definitely something to go with in the future. Um, as you can see here, 2-1. Mercifully make it 3-1 in the game of dominating. Anderson does well. Good ball into the shoe. 1-2 with Ladal into Mickey Elson, and it's a good little finish. And that is 3-1. And we get Ladal scoring an absolute, absolute banger for 4-1. Um, right at the end here, as you can see, 90th minute, switch into the 4 4 one, one, one system, which is all about us just being more defensive. Ladal just decides to hit it from here, and she flies in, and that is really nice, and they score one very, very late on for 4-2. But a game that was well and truly out of reach by the time they did it, so that was really good. Uh, but yeah, look, big win um, with results going on everywhere else. It means that we are mathematically now secure at a top six spot, which I was worried about when we lost 5-1 in the first game last episode, but we have done the job now. So in today's episode, you're gonna see the last two games of the season to see where we do finish, because the amount of points is imp is important. If we can beat Vigel, Viborg win their last two games, we win our last two games, we can get the 40 points, right? Or even with a shot of promotion. If we're on 35 points or 34 points, it's probably dead and buried, right? If we can get the 37 points, one win out of the two, it's got to be there or thereabouts, and we should be beating Fren Magard on the on the last day of the season. Now, saying all that, the goal isn't to get promoted, it's just to be within the conversation, because if you're in the conversation, you never know where you'll end up. We said the same thing about last season, we ended up promoted, this season, who knows. Also in this episode, we do have youth intake coming up at some stage as well. Um, it's meant to be another golden generation, last year was. We have got a lot of young kids coming in that we have signed into the club as well that you've seen, but apparently we have a right back that's meant to be really good coming through, and if he is good and 16, he probably gets a start over Teo, who's not been in the greatest form, but we'll really wait and see. Um, and yeah, and we're going to get Will back into the team, and Will's going to be playing some games as well at some stage he's wanted. Here you go, by Randers. Look, give me some money and by all means. But yeah, so that's the end of this first little part. I do have my girlfriend coming over as well, um, and she just finished her appointment on her way down. So I think what that means is that I am going to... Um, well, I'm going to keep continue streaming until I can, but if you see me for the next two games in a different attire, we've probably restarted the stream. It'll probably be tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. I thought we'll get this out of the way before I go off anywhere. And that is game number one against Horse Ends Done. As always, links down below. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. The links are down below for the Twitch channel. We do stream fairly regularly. Um, and I will see you guys in a second for the Vigel game, who are top. Win that one, you never know where we could finish and maybe we could mount a promotion fight. Welcome back, YouTube. Youth intake day. We have got a couple of prospects, but not as good as last year's, but still pretty decent. Two that stand out. Apparently, Jensen Sku is the best of the lot. And I tell you what, he's actually not bad at all. He could actually play very well in the middle of the park. He's got enough about him to be. Pretty decent. He's actually mentally really good at a young age. A lot of 12s, decent amount of vision, can pass a ball, decent amount of technique. He isn't the worst. He can move around. He's physically not the worst, but not the greatest. This is a guy that you put in deeper line playmark and just tell him to sit, sit and just do a job. He ain't bad. He's got a very good amount of scouting potential, and he's not bad at all. And until these guys are signed, we're not going to know how good they are. We're definitely going to sign him onto a new contract. We're going to approach to sign him here, future prospect. Yep. And we are going to put him on a part-time contract for a year on a pound and the optional extension by the club. 
There we go. Very easy to do. Kurt was talking about in our youth intake as being the bet as being the best at coming through. And he isn't bad either. 15 natural tackling. That is always helpful. 15 natural tackling, okay determination. Physically for a 16-year-old, not the worst that you do get from this level. Can pass the ball, okay. There's got to be a lot of eights there that will turn into nines. He's not bad, Kurt. He's born here too from Savenborg, isn't he? Oh, he's coming through. The shoes had an influence. He isn't the worst. He is coming in. Future prospect on a part-time contract for a pound. And with an optional contract extension for a year. Right, now we're just going to have a look through where the, where the rest are. Taking midfield on the right, he's okay. He's not the greatest. He's not bad. The Dane does okay. Um, and then we got Kennett. Yet again, okay, not great. Uh, yeah, not the greatest intake. We've got a goalkeeper here that's, yet again, okay, not great. So we had a bit of an, an air intake, which is not what you want to see. But an okay one nonetheless. Like, we have Kurt. He's in. We have Jen. He's in. It's not the worst. It's not as good as last year's. Last year's was a real golden generation. This year's, not as much. I do have high hopes, high hopes for this guy, though. This guy's not the worst. This guy is someone that's very usable. And that's where we're going to leave you, YouTube. We have got the last two games of the season coming up. And we will be A-OK. -okay. Where are we going to finish? You let me know in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in a second for that Vegil game on the second to last day of the season. It'll be top. It'll be fourth. It will be a big marker on are we here to make up the numbers? Or are we fighting for promotion? Welcome back, YouTube. You fintake not over. We have gone through and we have absolutely annihilated this league of its best talent. Because we're in the second division, a lot of clubs, because of the rules, don't have to tie down youth players to youth contracts per week. They can just tie them down to any contract, and as long as they've not got a value or are on a contract that locks them in, which I think 750 pounds or 150 pounds locks them into having a value, you can then approach them to re-sign them on a different contract. Just letting you know right now that we have done this. Jesper Anderson is a midfielder from Vigil, and because he's only powered at 450 pound and he's not on a fringe player there at Vigil, he can technically, as a youth contract, take another contract until he turns 17. In we come. We don't offer him anything. We offer him a part-time contract, an optional extension, but because we can offer him a bit of a better role, they jump ship. Have a look at him at 16. He's a lot better than what we had. 16 passing, decent physicals, not bad technicals, and okay mentals. This guy's coming in, and he ain't the best. Footback and Kurt... He's coming in mainly because he's 15. Good determination, decent physicals. This guy can do a job. Need to scout him, by the way. Don't know why he's not being scouted. Mateus Madsen, though, he will be the best. Have a look at him at 15 years of age. Physically unbelievable, mentally sensational, and technically what a player of football. He is coming in on a fringe contract player because I think at 16 he will play. Frank, though, is on another level. He's got great determination, physically very quick, and technically really good, and he's a natural passer of the football, always handy. He could be really good. And lucky last, yep, Anderson is the pick of the bunch. This guy probably will be the best midfielder at the football club when he joins. At 15 years of age, his technicals are that of a footballer in the Superliga. I am so excited to see what Yep Hansen looks like on a scout report. It's ridiculous. But that is the sort of talent we are bringing into the club. They are all coming through on the 1st of July of 2022. So they are going to be here and be part of the army that is coming into this football club. But wow, we, what a team we have. If we don't get promoted this year, their amount of 16, 17 year old talent that we have is going to be insane. The only thing I will say is not one of them is a centre-back, and that's probably the one position I need the most, is a centre-back. The talent we have got coming in is ridiculous. We have obviously gone and confirmed all those deals. Wow, wow, wow. We 
have picked up some absolute gems. And this is why I love lower league sales. The nook and cranny, we've been live for an hour and I've seen the day. We have gone and signed five guys that could probably walk in and go, hey, we're at 16 years of age. Hey, we probably belong in the first team. And if we don't get promoted, I'm probably saying, yeah, there's no point me not playing here because what else am I going to do? And that's the thing. I'm planning for not promotion. I'm planning that we are going to be in this division again. I'm planning that we don't get there. And with that in mind, why then wouldn't I play 16, 7 year olds that are going to grow into first team footballers when the board just really just want us just to be here? I do not believe that we just sign Anderson, Kurt, Mateus Madsen. Yeah, he will start. Frank. Oh, they've got scout reports. Hello, let's go have a look. Yep, Anderson doesn't have a scout report yet. Kurt has a scout report. Nope. One of them did. Matthias Madsen has a scout report. My God, he's already two and a half star. Look at him. He's already... He's already basically the best winger at this football club. We will train him to play right wing. Big time. He's already... Matthias is already nearly the best winger at the football club at 15. Frank? How is he two star? I don't understand. I don't understand how Frank is two star, but yeah, he'll be good, right? There we go. Yep, Anderson. N not the best midfielder at the football club, but at 15 years of age, he's going to be, right? And lucky last, that is it. We have some footballers. Are you excited? I am, and I'll see you guys for that Vigil game. Eventually, YouTube, we are at a Vigil game, and it does not come without a little bit of drama. Con is leaving us. He wouldn't re-sign a new contract with us. I understand it. I'm not mad. Um, Varbej Boyas in the Swedish Premier Division are coming in for him. They're a decent side. They currently sit 16th and are looking to avoid the drop. Oh, uh, well, no, they're not. They The season hasn't started, but there you go. Um, so, yeah, they avoided the drop. Well done to him. Uh, yeah, he, he's going for a K a week. An extra 1K to a professional club, and he definitely deserves it. He is unbelievable. We had the option to sell them now to him, but I don't think they wanted to sign for more than 2K. Say if it was like 100K or something, yeah, I probably would have to take the money and just play with a 17-year-old at centre-back. He is unbelievable. It's the one spot we do struggle is at centre-back. With Con and Molberg fit, we do have probably the two better centre-backs in the league. It just gives him a chance, and it gives me a chance that coming into these matches, even though we know we're losing one of our midfielders, it is okay. In terms of the team, one change. Anderson is suspended for this match. He is growing ever so well. Um, Vilhamosa, who's unbelievable, does come back in. In this ball-winning um, ball midfielder role, he could play a central midfielder on attack. He does suit it really well, but I do think a little bit more industry in the middle of the park does help here. He could also play central mid on support. Um, I just think he's a ball winning midfielder. It uses that tackling ability that he has so well and will run the show. And we got Harbour in the middle of the park. Mickey Elson on the left, Damanov on the right, Ladal on the shoe. Important to note that um, that uh, Stephen Gerrard is slowly coming back from injury as well. He can't play against Vigil, who is his former club. And he's on his way to Bordeaux. Vigil are losing a lot of quality players. Players don't want to be there. I don't know why, but we've gone and pitched a few. Anyway, in terms of their team, it is a very, very, very nice side. None of the lads that I think... Uh, Mikel had the guard. I was thinking could start, but he isn't starting here today and we're going to be okay. I want you to pick off where you left off last time, boys. You did go out and get a job. Well, we didn't do particularly great, but we got back into it. And we are going to get into this game. I'm going to let my dog through the middle door and we are going to get underway. Milky, score prediction in the chat. Get your dog. Off you go. Okay. And look, if we win this game, we're in with a shot. Lose this game, it is okay. With the young talent we've got, I've mentioned it plenty of times, if we stay in this division, it does not matter. Evening, Chief, I finally made it. Wet, how are you? Wet the north. Good to see you, mate. How's things, buddy? Anyhow, 25 minutes played here against top. It is nil nil. We are going to press this number 11, who is, seems to be getting a few balls into the park. And we are going to go. In saying that, though, every time I've done that, that guy's done something. Oh, my God, I thought he nearly put it in top bids. All right, Pedersen, you're good with your feet. I am looking at a new goalkeeper for next year. He looks for Mickey Elson and finds him. His ball looking for Diamondov is just under hit, and Montano's going to win it. Vilhamosa does what he does best and win the ball back, but 
unfortunately for him, does fall back there to the midfield. And Vigil moved through. McCauley going on a run, goes for goal, and he's hit the outside of the post. He had the keeper beat. And from about 30 yards out, nearly gave top the, the start they wanted. Anyway, Dean Nola on the ball, chips it down the line. Montano's there, and he's offside anyhow, and they've hit the post a second time. It would not have counted. And it is nil-nil, 35 minutes played. And look, it is all about us getting a result here today. It doesn't matter how well we play. If we can find a win, I am ecstatic. And at halftime at nil-nil against top, we are in with a shot. It's not our most fluent and it's not our most scintillating attack of best. But the longer it stays nil-nil and the opportunities the shoe will get, eventually we can do a job. It fills the Becker. He's one of the best strikers in the league. He's not going to get on that though. And Con, who is leaving us, punts it into the channel. And Liddell is there. All right, where is the shoe? This could be... Okay, Liddell's actually in by himself. Go for goal, my boy. Straight at the keeper. Unlucky. Didn't need the shoe in the end. It was a run and a half. Anyway... Time is ticking, 50 odd minutes played, it is still nil-nil. The longer it stays like this, the more we can maybe FM him. Molberg, he looks for Diamondov. The shoe makes the run, stops his run, now makes the run again. Diamondov, though, comes inside, going by himself. Can he find a pass? Instead, he's gone for goal. That is wasteful from the Bulgarian. And you know, there's players out here that need to be playing for their spot because there is some players coming in. Radio, oh, I was going to make a slight change, but it's a highlight. It's cleared away by Molberg, but only for our, as Macaulay. Don't let him shoot. Oh, my God. Right. I was going to make a change. Never mind that change. Well, it is going to happen anyway. I'm going to get Vilhelm Mosa getting a little bit more forward, which is what I was going to do anyway. But now, all of a sudden, we need to get this ball moving a little bit more. I was going to tell us to hit a couple of early crosses here as well. And I'm going to look for us to distribute over the top. And I am going to bring the Jill in for Ladal because of the heights. A point would be massive for us right now. I'm not going to lie. Also, I'm going to change anything else here. I feel like Teo's not had the best of the game as well. And Anderson as a 16-year-old can whip a ball. We have not been great. But a point wouldn't be bad. We knew it was going to be hard to win this game. And they have dominated. Is there going to be anything here? 80 minutes played, it's a highlight. Hey, if we score now, you never know. Burnus, a goal for them kills us. It's a decent ball that we can win, and Teo does. Diamond of now. Need to move it a bit quicker, mate, and you can't lose it. Here we go, Anderson, the youngster, puts it. The shoe, he's a man for all occasions. Oh, straight at the keeper. You expect that boy to score, don't you? Wow, Diamond off, ball in, cleared away. We shouldn't have taken Ladell off, actually. We should have taken Mickey Elson off, got Ladell out wide. Anyway, Molberg, highlight done. Mickey Elson's had a shocker. The ball goes long, and it's going to be a highlight here for top, don't you reckon? We need to win it back. We don't now. We might go to a full blitz press after this highlight if we don't concede, because goal difference could be important as well. Molgaard now with a chance on this right-hand side. Di Nala, ball in. That's a great world work move. Yeah, game over. That's all she wrote. That is all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. All she wrote. There's not much else you can really do, really. We will go to the full blitz press, but I don't think we're going to score anytime soon. They have just been too good. They're top for a reason. We did beat them. Away from home, we beat them. There we are, Diamond off, ball into the shoe, he looked offside, referee's flag didn't actually go up. And if it was a bit better with the ball, it would have been okay. I think this is a highlight because I'm trying to make changes, it is. And yeah, it just hasn't done the job. And at full time, we lose 2 0. Radio. Well, it's not how we wanted to start today. Winning the next game is paramount. Because that is now putting a little bit of a gap to the point where with 10 games to go after this next one, we've got 11 in total, but 10 games in the uh, promotion league, we're probably putting ourselves in a spot where it's too hard to do. However, it wasn't the worst performance, but it wasn't great. And we know on our day we can play a lot better than that. Unfortunately for ourselves, it wasn't it then. The silver lining is always going to be this. If we do not go up... I am not fussed because we have so many 16-year-olds that are going to be good enough to play in this division next season. I'll see you guys in a second for the last game of the normal season against Amager.
Welcome back, YouTube. It is the final day of the main season. We're currently on 34 points. We know if we do lose today, we can risk falling to sixth. We know if we win today, we can't jump a position, but we can put ourselves in a position where we're not all too far away from the teams in second and third. I think a win today is paramount if we want to mount some sort of promotion title fight. In terms of like the numbers that I expect to go up and all that, we'll cover that next episode. The next episode will be the first game of the promotion league. Anyhow, without further ado, we have got Frem Amaga in this game here, and I think we can do a job. Right, I really do. I'm also tempted to also say that Anderson's growing that much that he's now apparently like a four star level player. I am very, 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 very tempted. Right, if you're playing as advanced playmaker here on support in the hole, to um, what's even as an engage it, he's not bad to play the four two three one from the offset. I know that's a big call, but I feel like especially with Mickey Olsen struggling, I'm very tempted to do that. This is not often that I do this at all. See, I prefer him to be on the advanced playmaker on support, and I think Vilhamosa is a bit more of a central midfielder on support, and Hardbro here is a bit more of a deeper line playmaker on support. We can keep the ball and really do a job. I'm going to go to that. Now, that's a brave thing to do. Last game of the season, and we changed the system on the boys in a game that I think we need to win. I just think Ladol out wide is a better option than what we've got until Steven Gerrard is ready. Now, this could be pivotal. But I think on the final day, not being in the best of form of late, got to remember back to the last episode, we were lucky to win in the game we won 3-2. We did dominate. This could maybe, 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 maybe change our fortune just a little bit. It's not a system I will play once people are fit. Just going to let us go. It's us in the white. It's them in the blue. Score prediction in the chat. And as always, links down below. We are live. I am very tempted to play a system like this and get Anderson into the team and lining up because I think Anderson's that good at what he does. Anyway, the throw-in's pretty poor, but Eda Federiksen just punts it into the box and it's a bit wasteful from the 16-year-old. Anyway, it's a poor ball when Harbro wins it. And I'm looking to the two midfielders who are really good on the ball to really keep it and do a job. Will into Ladal and it has paid off already. Inside five minutes, we've decided to put Ladal as this inside forward and it is 1-0 SFB. Will is starting at left back as well. Forgot to mention that as well. He's a very good left back. And on paper, until Hedmagard joins, I think that's his name, um, Mikel, uh, he is the best left back and he will play out there. And Ladal chips it into the far bin and he just will give us goals out wide, Ladal. We can play the role. And it's 1 0 and we've already got 75% of the ball. I'm more worried about what Anderson does in this system. I might even, this is going to sound very weird. He's not the greatest shadow striker in the world, but I just think with the physicality that he does have, apart from the running ability, he wouldn't be the worst shadow striker, I reckon. Got to confirm that. There we go. I just know the shadow striker role works really well. And at the moment in this system, we are dominating, and that's exactly what you want to see. Anyway, the ball goes long, and can we win it in the air? We don't, and David's on it, and that's a ball that should be cut out by the keeper, and is in Pedersen. And now it's up to us to keep the ball and move it. And we do here with Con. And Con now looks into Molberg. And Molberg's ball looking for the shoes. Physical enough to win the ball in the air. But that wasn't the ball that was really on. And that is the one thing about the system that worries me. We're not of the technical ability to play a 4-2-3-1. But we do have enough about us. Oh my god. Can we stop conceding from distance? Can we just stop conceding from distance? They've done nothing this whole game, and then they've hit one from out there, and it's gone in. Far out. Make a save, keeper. Highlight from kickoff. It's 1-1. One, one. We can see from distance a fair amount. Vilhomosa looks for the shoot. Was the right idea, but wasn't the ball. If they score two goals in two minutes, I am livid. They chip it long, should be Molbo's ball, and he heads down in the hard, bro, and his balling for Dominov does find him. He beats his man. He's got numbers in the box. He might go for goal. Cuts it to Federic Eriksson. The shoe won't win that. Vilho Mossa touches hard, bro. Not known for his long-range hitting. The fullback, Dominov on the volley. What a move. Goal. 2-1.
Little chip ball. Diamond off side foots it back in. We get the lead straight away. Well played, boys. Well played. Federic Eriksson does the job out there out wide. Vilhamosa, hard bro. Good little ball out here. Touches it in and a side foot volley and the keeper's left pretty strong because I don't think he expected the shot to really come in. It's another highlight. It's chipped. It's cleared by Con and Diamondov might be able to bring it down and go. We've got numbers streaming. Absolutely streaming. Diamondov. Anderson's with him. In the end, it falls to him, and he's good on the ball, and he keeps it. Very well done. Wilhelm Osser finds Federic Eriksson. He looks for Diamondov. There's numbers coming into the box here if he can find a ball. He cuts it back to the fullback. Hardbro, to hit. He's hit the bar. Does it fall to us? It doesn't. It's offside anyway. Hardbro's effort deserved to go in, and it is still 2-1. If we are dominated, they've had one chance, and it's flown in. I'm not changing that. I'm not pressing him. We, they, we've dominated. There's no need. Half time, 2-1 to the good. We need to win this game. We have dominated it. I'm very happy to start the second half. Away we go. Can we do a job? Can we do the job? Deep throw in. Molberg. We need to make sure we don't lose the ball here. Ericsson just punts it. In the end, Diamondoff's not going to get on that. And that should be our ball as the dogs are barking for whatever reason. Will. Ladal. In the Anderson. Good ball out to Will. We move it around well. Will is good at getting forward too. That's a good ball to Diamond. Off. Beats his man. Big chance. He's hit the post. Why does this feel like a game we're going to get absolutely FM'd in? Why does this feel like a game we're going to get absolutely FM'd in? They have 0.04 to score in this game. And they've scored. Seventy minutes played. I don't want to really make a change. I really don't want to make a change. I'm not going to lie. I really don't want to make a change. I'm not even going to bother. Why? We are playing so well, I am not making a change. If we go 3 1 up, I'll make a change. But we're playing that well. I don't want to upset the balance of this game. Anderson. The shoe. Oh my God, he didn't shoot. Phil Hamasa. Hard bro game over. Come on. That's Harbro's first goal this season. For a guy that's meant to be this good and doesn't want to sign a new contract because he wants to play in the division above. It's his first goal all year. As if the shoe did not shoot with his head. Anderson and Federic Eriksson does well. Virgil Mossa, well done to lay it into his path. And there we go. Harbro scores. It's 3-1. And now, and now, and now, and now, I will look to make some changes. Morderson's going to come in for Will. Virgil Mossa's had a great game coming back from injury. I'm going to get Mads in there too. He's a ball-winning midfielder. Mads? No. Oh, that's Mickey Elson. Okay, maybe not. We'll get Hanson in there and actually move Hanson maybe into this role here, actually, and get him in here. Get Anderson into there. It's a bit more of an advanced playmaker on support. Get Hardbury in there. And we are going to get Steven Girardi in for Ladal as a light for light change. Yes, do that. There we go. Highlight. We should be good enough to still create a chance even five at the back. We don't win the ball, though. A goal for them would make things very interesting. I don't. They've done nothing the whole time, though. Can it be our ball? It's not. Will win it? Wants a note. Oh, my. He's missed. Thank God. Boys, can we concentrate? Yeah. Far out. They've done nothing this whole team. Focus up. This whole time, they've done nothing, and then bang. Come on. Time tick away. It's been a thoroughly professional performance, apart from the long-distance range hit that's gone in. Pedersen makes a save and it's cleared. Oh my god. Why does every time we just bring in some people off the bench, everything falls to poopy cucker? In the end, we should have scored about five today. We win 3-1. And this gives me a thought for the next game. We played 4-2-3-1. We dominated. Yeah, they weren't the greatest team in the league. And here on a different day, we win. That wasn't a bad performance. You've got to remember, Wilhelm Moss and Harbro dominated that game. That was exceptional, boys. That is really good. And maybe, just maybe, first game next se next episode, we do play the 4-2-3. The 4 2 one Sorry, got a hiccup. That is maybe an option. We do look good. Teams stay on 42, which means teams would have lost and teams would have won. Let's have a look. Yeah, Vibborg won to get the 42. Esper beat Vigil to go level. That is actually really good for us because that means that, yes, second and third mid away first we gain points on. And now, all of a sudden, 
There's three teams on 42, and we're the next best. Our goal difference isn't the greatest. Granted, that's our own fault, because we have lost a couple of games by a big margin this season. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully, this puts us in a good vein of form. I believe the 16th will be the promotion relegation um, fixtures. I will stick with the YouTube episode just to make sure that it is. But I would imagine that our next game is going to be there. We're given 170k for finishing fourth. The board are pleased. However, we could be even in a better position. That is true. The teams are into the promotion stage. Molberg reaches disciplinary his yellow card limit. So does a few. Our next game is against Silkenborg. Wow, big game to play. We have got people out. Two people suspended. It's going to be a hard task. But I'll see you there. Next game, Silkenborg and Skiv in the league. I think what we're going to do... I think what we're going to do is I'm going to break down every game as two little part episodes. I think that's what we are going to do. I'll see you there, YouTube. Thank you and goodbye.